Congregation may rise.
in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we find ourselves here on the Saturday morning in your house. For Lord, you have intervened in our life. You have called home a mother, a grandmother, a friend, a faithful congregant. And that Father, we now present ourselves to you this morning. And firstly, out of our hearts, Father, we bring our thanks to you for your angel's protection over us, for bringing us together, Father, even though we find ourselves in grief, in pain, in sorrow, Father, we acknowledge where else can we go. We turn to you, Father, as the comforter, as the one that will provide the healing upon the heartache, Father. The one that will provide us that which we need to go on our way forward towards the goal of our faith. You are the one, Father, that will wipe away the tears. Not only today, Father, but in the days to come. When we are, when we are alone, when we have these quiet moments and we think of Susan, we think of our mother, we think of our grandmother. And that, Father, that we know in our silence that we can turn to you for everything that you will provide the comfort and the strength we need upon our journey towards the goal of our faith and so father i ask you please be with the family strengthen them during this time and that father they have already experienced the love and the care and the support of so many and that father may this serve as strength for them into the future that during the moment and time of grief, of sorrow, that they are not alone, that they can rely on you, and that, Father, we will be there to support them during this time. And so there are others going through similar circumstances, Father, those that have to lay to rest a loved one during the course of this day. Father, we remember all, and we ask, may your grace and favor cover everyone. And, Father, there are those that cannot be with us in person, but they, they are connected with us via the broadcast. We ask, please, use the technology that your word of comfort can reach everyone. We seek now a special connection with those out of yonder realms, that they too with us, Father, can enjoy your word and your comfort here this morning. Cover us under the prayers of your leaders. They have promised to remember us during this time. Now, Father, we need your word. We need your comfort. We need your strength. And allow us to experience that now. Come here into our midst. We invite you, Father, that you can strengthen us and grant us that which we need. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear family, dear brothers and sisters, dear friends and guests, those here and those connected with us as basis for this funeral divine service, I read you a Bible word out of 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 2 and 3. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father. In Afrikaans, liebe broeders and sisters, Esther Thessalonicense 2, Esther Thessalonicense 1, vers 2 en 3. Ons dank God altijd oor jylle almal, as ons aan jylle dink in ons gebede. En onophoudelik in gedachte, hou die werk van jylle geloof en die arbeid van jylle liefde en die leidsamheid van jylle hoop op onze Heere Jesus Christus voor onze God en Vader. So ver.
Thank you. Dear family, dear brothers and sisters, dear friends and guests, we find ourselves here in God's house this morning. And as I've prayed, because the Lord has intervened in your life, especially in your life as a family, that He has called home your mom, that He has called home your grandmother. It's called home a friend. It's called home a faithful congregant. One whom we have loved and one who have loved us. And maybe according to our calculation today, maybe a little bit too soon, hey? Because we had certain plans. We will read in a short history that there was plans for a 60th birthday now in June month. And so the Lord changed our plans. I, th I think, Connor, you were even talking about your 18th birthday. You know, okay, it's still two, three years time. But that was even the long-term plans that you've spoken to Ma about. And so the Lord comes and he intervenes and he changes our plans. And dear family, we we'll never understand God's ways. We will never understand his thoughts. We will never understand his plans. But I pray that, that God grants you the strength to align yourself with that which he has decided today. And as difficult as it is, that even in grief, even in sorrow, as our text word says today, that we can bring thanks to God and today we can celebrate her life. We can celebrate your mom's life. We can cele celebrate grandma's life today because what we have heard and what we will hear because we have loved her and she has loved us as well. In the Beatitudes, I know I've shared it with you as a family, but allow me to share it with a bigger audience here today, the congregation. The Lord says, Jesus Christ says in Matthew 5 verse 4, Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So it's fine to cry. It's fine to mourn. We must do that. And not only today, but in the days to come. Because we come to our Heavenly Father, the one that can provide the comfort we need during this time. And it's very difficult. Dear children, dear brothers and sisters, you know, to lose a mother, it's one of the most painful experiences we can go through in life. And yet you have experienced, you have shared with me on Thursday evening, the wonderful support from so many. And I want to encourage us, dear brothers and sisters, while we are here today, I think many of us know, after the funeral service, what happens? Everyone goes their own way. And now, what needs to happen? We need to provide the aftercare to the family. That's very, very important. But grieve, cry, that's what you must do. Because Jesus even cried when we read into scripture. But that we can turn to our heavenly father so that he can provide the comfort we need. He can wipe away the tears, the sorrow, the grief that we are going through. And so we come today to celebrate a life. A free spirited life. And we're going to take out of her example today, dear brothers and sisters, that which we can take on our way towards the goal of our faith. And I pray, dear brothers and sisters, she was no perfect woman. But we're going to learn out of the short history that the family have shared with me. We're going to take out of her example that which we need and hold on to that memories. Because we are the Christians that 
don't only live for today. This is not the end of a life here on earth. Yes, the end of the life here on earth. But we have a hope for the future. That we've got no continuing city upon the face of the earth. Our home is with our heavenly father in the heavens. That's what we strive for. We strive for that meeting. We strive for one day when we will have that great reunion. To be with our bridegroom. To be with the faithful that have gone before us. And so the family has given me a short history of Susan Andrianatos. And I'd like to share it with you. Born the 4th of June, 1962. It says here, she was taken home from us too soon. Normally at a funeral service, people sometimes say that only the good things were mentioned. When we look back at her life, there are only good things that come to mind. She, as all of us, had her crosses to carry, but never carried it on her face. She always had a smile, an infectious laugh, an ear to listen, and a willingness to help. She was a genuine person, never beating around the bush. She loved sunflowers, which we see on the altar here today. She always said that sunflowers are special because they look up to the sun. This was a life looking up to the sun, Jesus Christ. She loved music. And on a Sunday after service, the entire street would hear the church's music CDs playing while she prepared Sunday lunch. Following the commandments was easy. She loved God above all and loved a neighbor more than herself. She had, she had a manner of creating special bonds with children. They loved her immediately. She had an immense love for her grandchildren, Connor and Kendall, and always made sure she attended every school concert, sports day, birthday, and anything else that was special to them. As a children, we were planning a 60th birthday, which would have taken place in June this year, but did not know that we would say goodbye so soon. Even when she left, it was on a date and time that we, can, that we cannot forget. 22.02.2022, just after 2200 hours. It is our faith and our belief. God knows what is best. And then, Allow me, dear brothers and sisters, to share personal messages from the children and the grandchildren from Antoinette. Dear mommy, I thank God every day for blessing me with a mother like you. Shoo, mom, you were my best friend. We could chat for hours about anything and everything. You always had my best interest at heart. I'm going to miss you so, so much. Your infectious smile, your love, your jovial spirit, and your spontaneous laugh. Our time spent together was short, too short, but I loved every minute of it. Love you, mommy. From Brian, dear mommy, it takes a lot to know what love is. It's not the big things, but the little that can mean enough. There were a lot of prayers to get me through, and there is never a day that passes by that I don't think of you. Mom, you were always there for me, pushing me and guiding me to always succeed. God has been so good, blessing me with a mom that did all she could. I want to thank you for what you have done, my dearest mom. I, can, I hope I can give back to you by being the perfect son. I love you, Susie, he writes. From Andre, dear mommy, thank you. Since Antoinette introduced me to you nearly 30 years ago, your motherly love has only increased. Being your son for the past 17 years has been a blessing and has taught me a new meaning of thankfulness. Each time we spoke, you would say, thank you for alles wat jylle vir ons doen. Thank you for the love you have for our children. You shine through them and you will never be forgotten. The grandchildren from Kendall, dear Ma, thank you for caring for me. I never, for, I never got to properly say thank you. 
your roast potatoes are as warm as your heart. From Connor, hello Ma, I want to say thank you. Thank you for everything you did for us. What you did for me. Ma, you were always there to listen to me about my day and to listen to my jokes. I miss Ma. I'm going to miss those Sunday afternoons when you were making food and I was your tester. I know I'm definitely going to miss Ma's chicken. Parties are not going to be the same without you. I remember those plans we made for my 18th and the jokes we made about going to clubs one day. I miss you, Ma. I know that you are in a better place now. If Jesus ever tells you the secret behind that wine trick, Ma, please tell me. <laughs> Goodbye, Ma. Can we allow that which we have heard to process within our hearts and our ask the choir to sing a scene, please? Dear brothers and sisters, allow me to read you the text word again that we have received. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father. So our Bible word this morning, dear family, dear brothers and sisters, comes out of the life where Paul wrote to the congregation of Thessalonica and he goes on to thank them. He thanks them for their faith in God, he thanks them for their hope, and he thanks them for their love. And he goes on to encourage them. He says to them, continue the works of faith, continue the labors of love, and continue in the steadfastness of hope. And dear family, dear brothers and sisters, let's just take those three virtues that we have heard about this morning, the works of faith. Let's remember that and take out of Susan's life that which she was an example to us about. And today, dear children, dear grandchildren, she exhibited faith. You could see that in a conduct, in a nature. She served the Lord. She loved the Lord. In all circumstances of life, she looked to the Lord. You wrote in there today that she loved sunflowers. And what was the strength? That she looked to the Son, Jesus Christ. That was her strength. Her faith was evident in what she did for you as a children. That she imparted the godly values and principles into you. She served the Lord by making music by loving that part of the Lord's work, worshiping God. She loved the Lord's house. We could see that in attendance to divine services. And dear family, we take out of her life today that she has taught us something very special. That you said that she never carried the circumstances on her face. In all of our circumstances today, dear brothers and sisters, whatever it is 
The comfort we take out of her life is she always looked to Jesus. That was a strength. That was a joy. That was a comfort. She did not allow the circumstances to move her. She remained close to God at all times. And I want to say to us today, continue in those principles. Continue in those values that mom and ma has placed into you. Continue serving the Lord. Continue in faith towards the goal of our faith. And then it says to us, labor in love. And Brion and Antoinette, there's something that stands out. We spoke about it on Thursday. Was your mom's love? Hey? Was your mom's love? You know, we hear in every divine service that we should love God above all and our neighbor as ourselves. Here, your mom did more than that. She loved God above all and a neighbor more than herself. And you were witnesses of that. Dear brothers and sisters, we hear about it in every divine service. You know why? Because sometimes we place ourselves before our neighbor. And I'm sure today if I ask you, do you love God? I'm sure we all would agree. We love God above all. But it's sometimes difficult to put that love that I have for my neighbor above me, in front of me. And here today, your mother was that. That she placed a neighbor before herself. What a wonderful role model today. And I know you loved her and she loved you when we listened to that she didn't miss out on anything. Hey, Connor, Kendall, she didn't miss out on anything. She was, she placed the love that she had for you into action. It was seen in her conduct. It was seen in what she did for you as a family. And how beautiful I share with the congregation. The priest shared it with me before the divine service. Family shared it on Thursday as well. And when Susan was sick, now for the past few weeks, and Kendall would receive a Holy Communion here at church. And you know what she would do? She would take it home for her ma. That's the love she had for her ma. And then when the priest came to serve the ma, and then she could say, well, now I can have my own Holy Communion. Hey? But that's the love they had. That's the love... Kendall had for her grandmother the love that Connor had. And this is probably the strongest characteristics that stands out in her life was the love that she had for you children, the love she had for you grandchildren, and the love she had for us, dear brothers and sisters. When you listen to some of the other things they shared, that when she got into contact with somebody, whether it be in the mall, that, you know, she was infectious, she would speak to everybody. You know, even longer. She just had that magnet to draw everybody to her. And I want to say to you today, dear children, dear grandchildren, hold on to that love that your mother and grandmother has been, that role model. Grow in that love for each other. May that love be seen, that, that can I say, that action love be seen in what you do for one another. That we grow in the love of Jesus Christ. That we grow in that commandment which Jesus Christ have given to love God above all and our neighbor as ourself. And out of her life, our neighbor more than ourself. And then it says that we remain steadfast in hope. We, dear brothers and sisters, we are those that not only focus upon that which is earthly, we focus upon that which is eternal, that which is everlasting. Yes, we will go on our journey today and Mo Susan will not be here. You, when you get home in the afternoons, she will not be there. That Sunday cooking, Connor will not be there. I'm not sure whose food you're going to test now, you know. But she will not be there, you know. But we have the faith and the assurance that she is together with the faithful that have gone before us. We are not upon the face of the earth forever. We have laid to rest early on a young brother. And the comfort we take out of it is that our hope is with Christ, our Heavenly Father. We have received that word last year, that watchword, Christ is our future. The Lord knew us in the past, He knows us today, and He knows our future. And that's our striving. 
That one day we will meet our bridegroom, Jesus Christ. That we will meet those that have gone before us, the faithful. And can we just imagine that great reunion? Can we just imagine when we will meet our bridegroom, when we, when we will meet Susan again? And when we sang this opening hymn, dear family, shall I meet you at the fountain? I want us for a moment just to think of Susan playing that, that CD now. Shall I meet you at the fountain? And she's playing it for all of us today. The question is not to her, shall I meet you there? She's asking us that question today. Shall I meet you at the fountain? Will you be there? Can we hear that CD playing? And that we must answer that for ourselves. And if we want to meet her there, then our word says to us today, let us continue the works of faith. Let us continue laboring in love. And let us continue steadfast in hope. And then in conclusion, dear family, this word started off where Paul says, we give thanks to God always. And I want to say to you as a family, dear brothers and sisters, even in grief, even in sorrow, let us bring our thanks to God for the life that he has given to us in your mother and your grandmother, that we take out of her example the wonderful virtues she has placed into your and my heart, even in grief, even in sorrow, that we can acknowledge God in everything, that we can say, Lord, what you have decided is well done, and that therein we know we will meet more again. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, this is a private cremation, and we will now do the committal. I ask the congregation please to rise. I now return the mortal body to the earth with the words, earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, soul and spirit, however, I commend to the love of Jesus Christ, who shall guard over it until the resurrection to eternal life. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Come, let's pray. All thanks, praise we bring to you now, Heavenly Father, for your word of comfort and strength that we have received. And Father, here I place before you the family, the children, the grandchildren in particular, and ask you, please, Father, be with them in this difficult time. Grant them much strength and courage. And Father, that the wonderful memories that they have of their mom and grandmother May this, Father, carry them through this period of time. May the many messages of support, phone calls that they have received also serve as wonderful strength. And so, Father, we prepare ourselves. A great day stands before us tomorrow, the service for the departed. And, Father, we are convinced. We have the faith, we have the belief that Susan will be with us tomorrow, not in the flesh, but in the spirit that she will also come to receive out of the anointed vessels, Father, the wonderful gifts of grace that, Father, together we long for when your Son will come that we can have this great reunion. So, Father, be with us. Be with the family during this time once again. And, Father, always grant them much comfort and strength that their souls need that they can continue remaining faithful to the end. So, Father, there's all our preparations for tomorrow and whatever else needs to take place. Please, Father, lay your blessing upon everything. Our longing and desire is above all now. Shorten time and way. If your son comes today, Father, accept us all with you in loving grace. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. be seated then the choir will conclude for us please
I ask the priest, Andre Davids, he will do the things for us, please.